So again, welcome everyone to today's talk on open source maintenance. I'm Vui Nguyen, the Leadership Fellow for the Women Code Mobile Community. And before we start the talk, let me introduce you to our event facilitators today. Regina Arsala is an iOS engineer and has participated in Hacktoberfest in the past as a contributor. She works remotely from Vancouver with her adorable schnauzer, George. And Jackie Chan is a software engineer currently exploring web and Android development. She is the lead maintainer of the Women Code Mobile GitHub account. Thank you, Jackie and Regina, for giving this talk today. And I'll now let you two take it from here. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Can. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's start. We're going to start with the purpose of our talk. Uh, it's to better gain a better understanding of maintaining open source projects. And our intended audience are maintainers from Women Who Code Mobile, um, who are interested in the future coding projects we have lined up, which are iOS, Android, and game, a game, and anyone else who wants to further their understanding on how to maintain a project. Okay, next slide. Okay, and um, here's our agenda. So we'll start off by um, defining what is open source maintenance and our general best practices, how to set up or how the women who code mobile GitHub is set up, our roles and expectations, our maintainer workflow, and finally, how our uh, repo is organized. Okay, yeah, I'll pass it to Jackie for this slide. Okay, thank you. Um, so to ensure we're on the same page to start off with, so an open source project is code that's freely available for anyone to use, modify, or distribute. The code is typically available on public repositories like GitLab, or in our case with a woman who code mobile track, it's GitHub. So open source projects may have one or more contributors and typically have a maintainer or a core team of maintainers responsible for managing contributions. Um, and tasks that a maintainer is responsible for can include like deciding on the project's direction, which can be as broad as what do we want to make an iOS or an Android app? And, or like, do we want to make like a to-do app or do we want to make a shopping app? Um, or it can be more specific, like what exact feature do we want added or changed, like wanting the color of a button to be blue instead of green, which is very important sometimes. Um, these types of decisions will usually fall upon like the maintainers um, and open source maintenance uh, will also include like reviewing code contributions um, and determining which portions of source code goes into a release or build to ensure code functionality and quality. Um, as a project's being developed. And it also includes managing and monitoring the community of your specific open source projects. There are usually many people and many moving parts involved with the project. And um, and like only with like organized collaboration and a clear workflow can a project really thrive and flourish, um, particularly because it's a lot of times like a volunteer basis for open source maintenance. So maybe next slide. <laughs> Um, so general best practices uh, when it comes to more like the social or community side of the project can include like writing down your project's like vision as well as communicating expectations from the beginning so that everyone has a clear understanding of how to move forward as a team. Um, most of the communication when it comes to like open source projects are usually completed async or like def like not face to face or live. Um, so communication can get lost um, if it's not written explicitly of like, you know, what you want. Um, usually in uh, and it's usually available in like the project repos like read readme file. Um, uh, otherwise, like, you know, maintain like, you know, both maintainers and contributors can get lost or lose focus. Um, to further optimize for focus and prioritization of like moving the project forward, it's also a best practice to learn how to say no while keeping the conversation friendly and kind. Um, sometimes maintainers will have to say no to like merging a code, code contribution or um, because it's like not up to standard or meeting like, you know, or maybe like needing to say no with a feature idea because, you know, there are more pertinent issues at hand that maybe the contributor might not see or might not understand because they might not see the whole picture just yet. 
Um, so uh, for me, I personally like to delineate that I'm not necessarily saying no to like you, uh, the person that's in front of me, but the idea of like um, the idea of, be of like, you know, of what we're talking about in the interest of like the entire project and what's best for the project. Um, so that's what helps me at least, you know, sometimes. Um, and uh, as mentioned, um, open source projects are typically on like a volunteer basis. And so it's important for like a healthy project to like attract helpful, uh, to help to attract helpful contributors um, by spreading the word about the project. Um, so attracting helpful contributors can include like shout outs like those in our Women Who Code like mobile track, like uh, which is like uh, on our Applaud Slack channel or spreading the word through like social media or Q&A platforms like Stack Overflow or Reddit. Um, and then the next slide, please thank you. Um, and so then um, other general best practices that's more on like the technical side of the project can include like, you know, addressing issues in a timely manner. Otherwise, no one will show interest in contributing to an open source project if it doesn't address potential bugs, security issues, or feature additions, or even like use the open source project that, you know, everyone's working so hard for. Um, Another thing that, you know, that's a best practice would be adopting a test driven like development approach um, that will help with finding issues like easier and quicker so we can address them faster. Um, and in line with testing often, uh, regularly monitoring and evaluating the system performance will also help the project continue to succeed. As with all coding projects, writing good uh, documentation will help not just future you, but other developers who are working from the same code base. And then lastly, using source control like Git will ensure we don't lose any progress or project history that may be vital for us to understand before we move ahead on a project. Um, and then next slide. Um, so uh, now that we've like discussed like how to like maintain open source projects in general, um, we're going to try to like dive specifically into details of how we propose to set up and maintain the open source coding projects that we're planning to start up soon with the Women Who Code mobile track. Um, and so this is a proposal, but we were very open to like discussing and talking because we want everyone to, um, you know, feel like they are empowered to uh, work on this. Um, but ideally, um, ideally, open source projects have their own repo to more easily manage permissions and changes made to um, the project. Uh, but um, unfortunately, our Women Who Codes like GitHub page is actually a repo under the Women Who Codes organization. And what this means is that the projects will be saved in a repo within a repo, which means that unlike with just like where it's like a first repo level, we can't necessarily give like permission access to members only by project. It kind of, we have to give access to the entire like mobile GitHub repo itself. Um, and so like after like debating for a while and like trying to figure out like, you know, what, how best to like handle this, um, we, we propose that, you know, we will just create, uh, oh, with like, oh, sorry, <laughs> um, we propose like, you know, we were wondering what to do. Cause like, we were wondering whether, you know, should we go and like separate, like have a whole separate, like GitHub profile where only the coding projects themselves, um, will be there, except there's a very big con of it not being directly associated with our own mobile track GitHub page. Um, or do we go and, and like have it where it's a repo under a repo and with, you know, the very, like, you know, big advantage that it is within, um, our, within our own like GitHub. And we have decided that it like would make more sense to continue to have it under our own, um, but have everyone be more careful when working. Um, and so, you know, we can still like talk and like, you know, it's not like final decide or anything like that, but we, after thinking about it, this is what we thought would like make a lot more sense um, if we just have it under our own, but you know, everyone's just more careful um, and we'll like delineate exactly how we would be more careful. Um, so what this would mean for us would be that everyone would fork the Women Who Code Mobile repo in its entirety, um, which isn't as optimal because then you'll have other content on your repo that you don't necessarily need on your local computer. But then all the projects stay within our GitHub um, and that way, you know, mobile members will be able to like look at other like, you know, our resources and be able to 
to like funnel into and use our GitHub more, which is fantastic. Um, and so then we've outlined what workflow that we propose would be best, but of course we're happy to discuss further. And then this is just what we thought would be helpful. Um, and then next. And so this is just like a GitHub screenshot of um, our Women Who Code Mobile. The, uh, we'll link like, you know, the actual, if you're not familiar with the GitHub, if with our GitHub pay, uh, page or repo, um, we'll link it in our resources uh, slide. That's like later in the presentation, but here's just like a quick screenshot. Um, and you'll see at the very top that it's, uh, we are under, like we are a repo under the Women Who Code organization. Okay, um, yeah, so I'll go over the project roles and expectations. So in an open source project, there are three types of roles, um, or at least two, just contributors or maintainers. But for the Women Who Code um, projects, we will be splitting that up into three. So we have a contributor, a non-lead maintainer, and a maintainer. So, um, and they're organized by increasing levels of repo access, and we'll go into that in the next couple of slides. Um, yeah, so contributors, uh, some role expectations that we have for contributors to Women Who Code Mobile. Uh, they'll be working on features or resolve issues by opening a pull request or um, also known as a PR. Ask questions by either leaving comments under the original GitHub issue or uh, pinging maintainers on relevant Slack channels. So um, again, that's yeah relevant to the Women Who Code um, projects that we'll have um coming up in the future hopefully um everyone will be interested and join women who code and yeah and then another thing that they should do is tag the pr with project name label since we have an ios android and a game project um it'd be better for organization purposes to have them labeled so the correct maintainers can review the project and um, ideally they'll wait up to around one week for their changes to be merged by maintainers and then the second uh, role that we have are non-lead maintainers. So we'll have one or more per project and we call these, or we can consider these the first pass PR reviewers. So their role expectations include answering contributor questions and we're aiming for a one to two day turnaround. So um, like Jackie said in like earlier with best practices, um, responding in a timely manner as a contributor and providing feedback or requests for changes on a PR, um, following up with them uh, when appropriate, uh, organizing reviews amongst themselves. Um, yeah, again, using that project label filter that I mentioned earlier uh, and taking about four to five business days to review a single PR and finally tagging the lead maintainers when they feel that the PR is merge ready. And then lastly, uh, we have something called lead maintainers. So we plan to have two per project and you can consider them the final pass peer reviewers. So uh, their role expectations include uh, looking out for GitHub mentions when they're tagged by non-lead maintainers and final finalizing the code quality of um, the PRs and most importantly, merging the PR into the, the repo and um, yeah, following up with non-lead maintainers when appropriate, if they see not like little activity um, or um, communications between the contributors and the non-lead maintainers. And since um, the bulk of the work is just merging the PR, we expect them to take about two business days to merge it down into the repo. And if there are two lead maintainers, um, it's up to them how they want to like uh, split responsibilities. So. They could take turns weekly or um, take turns by PR, but um, yeah, it's really up to them. Um, and again, like the big difference between the non-lead maintainers and lead maintainers is that uh, the lead maintainers will have permissions to merge PRs onto main, but lead maintainers can pretty much do all the tasks that non-lead maintainers um, will have. And um, here's a little, diagram I made just to illustrate like the workflow here. Um, so again, from like the timeline between first opening a PR and um, having it merged down will be about one week and there'll always be back and forth between like the different roles, right? So we don't expect it to always be linear. They could be um, like bugs you need to fix or questions you have to ask. So yeah, 
um, it's pretty much from contributors, non lead maintainers, and lead maintainers. So that's um, the kind of the path um, we expect them to um, take. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, when it comes to our GitHub open source projects, um, we uh, are proposing this like you know directory structure, and so um in order and which we thought would be optimal to promote like organization and workflow um so as mentioned the project's director would be under women who code mobile repo which is under the women who code github profile um and in that like projects directory there will be like a resources folder to be used by like all projects particularly for resources that will like that's more general and will allow people to figure out answers for like frequently answered uh, for like you know faqs um and so uh, for example, like uh, the talk a few weeks ago on how to get started with like open source contributions um, or contributions um, would be there for like any new contributors who may not have like contributed to a project before. Um, and then and then that way maintainers don't necessarily have to like answer some like the basic like, you know, how to like commit um, uh, or like, you know, or any of the other like, you know, get. Uh, flow. Um, and then uh, as well as like this talk will be there for any new maintainers uh, who might join later or like who, who who weren't able to like, you know, be part of this uh, to join us in this talk. Um, and maybe they've or maybe they've never like contributed to, or sorry, maybe they've never maintained an open source project before. And like, that's what they need to get started. Um, and uh, so ideally, uh, there would be like a read me and like contributing um, well, uh, uh, file uh, so that like everyone would just be on the same page. And then there will, uh, within each of the uh, coding projects themselves, um, you know, we're planning on it to have like the same like general structure within the project. So like, for example, like a design or like brainstorming like folder across every single one of them um, and at, or like an assets folder. Um, however, there will likely then be like an app folder within each project. And then for there, that means the main uh, there the maintainers will get like, you know, autonomous um, like decision on like where like what they want their individual project to look like because you know best practices for let's say like an ios you know project will look very differently than best practices for like an android project um and we think that you know the maintainers of and then whoever is leading um the project should get to decide what they want within that project it's just generally we would probably want it to like look similarly but within the app folder um then everyone would get to say whatever and do whatever makes sense for them uh, uh, but speaking about like fine, like you know, general like repo organization or like you know file naming, um, we all want you to like feel empowered and have autonomy to like as maintainers to do what makes the most sense for your project. Um, having said that, <laughs> uh, I I've maintained like the woman who co mobile GitHub repo for a while now and started when, to my knowledge, um, there was no one who did it before me. Um, and as you can imagine, when there's no one like overlooking the projects, um, I've seen some things <laughs> and, um, and you know, so, uh, where it's, I think it's good, um, to have like established standardized guidelines. Um, and yeah, to have, <laughs> Yeah, because, um, you know, there are times where I have seen, like, for example, iOS content like that was like under like the Android study group, but then labeled as like a Flutter resource. Um, so things like that, uh, we usually have to go in and like, you know, fix. And so um, usually standardization or like guidelines of some sort would help with that. And it's just less work for everyone. <laughs> um so, um, and I say this with like, you know, me, myself, like sometimes just like writing things within my own, like, you know, desktop of, you know, in a rush and like not labeling things correctly as they could. But while that works like in the visually okay enough um, at scale, that's, you, you know, it doesn't usually work at scale as effectively. Um, and so uh, with that um, it's usually good as we talked about before to have like a readme or a contributing um, file um, that way everyone's like on the same page and if they're not if they didn't if they weren't able to like you know have like a face-to-face -face, like you know discussion initially they'll know how to like jump in and like figure out what to do um, and then I think most of the organization comes with either like, you know, the structure of the directory or file naming um, is, I think, a big one. Um, and um, when it comes to 
uh, file naming. Uh, so first, like, you know, a best practice would be like, you know, having like logical file organization, whatever makes sense. And so that there is some sort of like everything like makes sense together. Um, and then to keep the names like short, but meaningful. Um, please no misspellings uh, and please no big misspellings uh, at that. And that would be very helpful. Um, and then to make use of like, you know, consistent, like, you know, relevant like uh, elements, which will go and like, you know, organize that. Um, and then, like, you know, avoid special characters and spaces, usually like pick some sort of like, you know, some sort of like naming um, style that makes the most sense for your project. And then obviously then like document and share the naming um, conventions. Um, Cause if we are able to do this and like, you know, be very clear about this from the beginning, um, you know, contributors will know how to like, you know, what, what, is ideal and then that way then it goes up the chain so the non-lead like maintainers will have an easier job and not having to like you know um fix things or write any like you know fix things or like you know create another issue to go and fix that and then like then lead maintainers will have an easier job to just like you know pass that and then and then our like github like you know mobile um page will just look great and then it would be yeah that would be the most ideal i think um, next, um, does anyone have any questions or thoughts? Uh, so, um, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, uh, Jackie and Regina for giving this presentation. Um, uh, you know, they've worked so hard putting together this initial process, uh, for, um, you know, because our plan is to have some uh, open source projects for Women Code Mobile going to New Year, and it's always hard, um, you know, being the ones to to come up with that that initial process. It's a lot of work, so uh, thank you so much for for doing that. So huge, huge applaud uh, to both of you. Um, so yeah. Um, you know, what questions uh, do people have about, um, you know, the whole main open source maintenance or about this process? Um, yeah, and if, you know, feel free to type in the chat or uh, if you want to, uh, to speak, uh, to request to be unmuted, uh, feel free to raise your hand and I'll, I'll mute you. Um, yeah, I'd love to, to hear all of your thoughts. Yeah, so Jackie saying this is just what we propose after thinking through the workflow, but we want to make sense for everyone. So please let us know if we want to do anything different. Yeah, so um, exactly, you know, it's, you know, this is none of this is like set in stone. So, you know, if any of you are, are interested, for example, in participating um, in these open source projects, which we'll, we hope to kick off in the new year, uh, nothing set in stone. Um, we just want to put out an initial process just to get some discussion going because the, the hardest part is when you start something new and, you know, everyone kind of like asks the same questions over and over again, right? And that gets very uh, time consuming and that can be very frustrating. So we're trying to like cut down on that by saying, you know, this is what we think initially as our structure, as our guideline, and then we can we can work on that. So, well, I know, like, uh, you know, Ren, if you don't mind me uh, pointing you out, uh, I know, like, you've expressed interest. You're you're a volunteer for Women Code Mobile. Um, you have any any thoughts about this process as a possible uh, maintainer? If you're there, 
All right, well, we'll get back to you. Uh, uh, Michaela has a question, it looks like. Yes. It looks like when a PR is being reviewed in GitHub, how could a contributor see the difference between a non-lead maintainer and a lead maintainer? That's a good question. I think it makes sense to write that in the readme or the contributing markdown file. Um, just to like, yeah, outline like the roles at least for the maintainers. So um, they will definitely have to see that before they contribute to, contribute to the project, right? So we can tag their usernames in that markdown file. <laughs> that makes sense. Unless you have a different idea too, we could also. Um, and, and I think she's talking more about like specifically when the PR is being reviewed too. So I, I think that's like a, one of the starts, which is like, you know, uh, it gets like explicitly written in the contributing. Um, uh, markdown file uh, but when it's being reviewed we were thinking that it would make the most sense of probably having like labels and like or like you can actually like um, label it on the issue itself and then probably just like switch it if we're able to um, or even just like a quick ping probably to the other person um, it's like definitely not ideal and this wouldn't be like the way we like you know would ultimately uh, you know have it um, but we're working with what we have and, I, and we think that that might make um the most sense for now um but maybe with time either unless someone has like a better suggestion or maybe with time we'll like probably like flush through it and like make and everything will make more sense as we figure things out together i i think if if i may add something to that um in, in terms of this uh workflow that that you know we have uh proposed does it really make much of a difference if the person reviewing your PR is a maintainer or a lead maintainer? Because I, I think in, in, in terms of that, I think it doesn't really matter, right? Because you because as a contributor, you're just going to work with whoever was assigned to review your PR. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, and then uh, when Regina and I were like figuring out the workflow, we were thinking it would make sense where like you know it's a contributor <clears throat> the contributor would like you know um contribute and then after that it would then be like the non lead maintainers and that's like a group where like anyone could like or like anyone that like you know that can most quickest or you know maybe we even tag a person specifically so that like there's someone looking out for it for sure and then after that then at that point the lead maintainers would then be tagged specifically and we kind of have like an on-call like lead maintainer um and then that way it would just um you know the the project would like in the project or the issue itself will just kind of like move forward um otherwise i think what would end up happening is it might like just end up kind of like static and not you know no one's like actively working on it so i i think part of the workflow would be figuring out how to uh, assign which maintainers are going to uh, review which PRs, right? To make sure things don't fall through the cracks, right? I, I don't know if that was addressed, but that's just something to consider. Um, Definitely like leaving a paper trail on the PR itself. So once like a non-lead maintainer reviewed it, um, they could assign the lead maintainer next. Mm -hmm. so the contributor could see, oh, who's on my, um, like who's who's reviewing or who's like um waiting to review my PR. But again, that's like under assumption that they know who who's a non-lead and who's a who's a lead. But um, that's a good point, Michaela. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple more questions, which I think is fantastic. So let's uh, make sure we go through them. Um, so Ren asks. Uh, I'm wondering how you all have kept track of posting timelines. Is one week a rough estimate? Uh, uh, yes, it's just a, oh, it's a it's like a rough estimate that we hope would you know would be what ends up happening uh, as often as possible. I mean, as time goes on, we'll see whether that's like you know we'll, we'll know as we work through it whether that's reasonable or not. Um, but we thought through it and that like, you know, with an issue, you know, first the issue will come, uh, will like pop up and then, you know, and after the contributor had time to like, you know, then like, you know, um, do a PR, 
that it would make sense that, you know, approximately like five days is when the non-lean maintainer can have a look and hopefully it won't be too, too, that won't be too like, you know, time restrictive of a uh, estimate. And then we thought that at that point, after like the non-lean maintainer would have, um, have already made a pass, then the lean maintainer, it shouldn't take too long for them to just look over it and be like, okay, this makes sense. Like, you know, this, we can just like merge this mm -hmm. um, because uh, we were hoping this, or we think about this because like in the past, and I'm sure like, you know, in some of the projects maybe that you've worked on sometimes, like, you know, PRs don't get looked at for like three weeks or four weeks. And at that point, um, the project just kind of stalemates a little bit. Um, so that's what we thought would make sense. Um, but if, you know, if there are any concerns or feedback, like let us know. And then also, you know, I figure that as time goes on, we'll see whether maybe it'll be quicker or maybe it'll be like, maybe that's too big of a, a you know, time frame, or maybe it's too little of a time frame and we need to expand it. But we'll, you know, we're definitely flexible of like what works best for everyone. <laughs> uh, so Ren, does that answer your question? I've also uh, allowed you to unmute if uh, you want to. Okay, so that sounds good. All right, cool. All right, uh, next question. Let's see, Michaela is asking, I think it helps a contributor to know what step in the process they may be in for how close they are to their PR being merged. Uh, okay, and then Jackie said that's a really great idea. And another comment from Michaela, you could use a code owner's file to automatically assign the non-lead maintainers for the first pass. And then once they're satisfied, they would then be responsible for tagging the lead maintainer. Okay. You know, yep, that's exactly what I just thought. Okay. Um, do you have any additional comments about that? Great. Um, any more questions or uh, folks? Uh, we we can we have plenty of time, so we can uh, give it a couple minutes uh, if people have any more questions or comments. Or there's also like um, we we can talk a little bit about the resources too, and then maybe some people would think of questions in between. Oh, that's something. a great idea. Um, so here are like, you know, our like resources that we came up with where, um, so the first one is a link to our like GitHub page. Um, if you ever like, you know, maybe have time, it would be great to like look over it. There's a lot of resources there, um, that's available for, our, you know, whichever, um, you know, platform that you use, um, that hopefully is clearly labeled as, as so it's easy to find. Um, and then there's just some other like, you know uh links that um that you know that talk about best practices or how to like maintain an open source project um i think sometimes contributing to a pro an open source project is very different than like maintaining and helping like you know organize um feels very different and it's and, you know there's a lot of articles that talk about how to approach an open source project from that point of view um so yeah um, and then uh, uh, we can, you know, we're still open for time with like discussions, but for now we wanted to both say thank you um, for coming to our talk on a Saturday morning. Um, and I don't know about your time zones, but it's quite early for at least me personally, but I'm sure like, you know, actually I think also in Regina, um, at least if not everyone else. Um, so we wanted to say thank you. Um, and we would love to like continue connecting with you either through like, you know, the beacons um, link uh, for the woman who co mobile. So, you know, that, you know, includes our, like our Slack channel or, um, or, you know, or our, uh, you know, there's Facebook and Instagram and all that. Um, and then uh, so there's like Regina's like LinkedIn um, that you can contact her from or for me, you can contact my LinkedIn, uh, you know, either connect with like, you know, LinkedIn or you can email me and that's good with me too. So thank you. All right. Well, thanks again uh, so much, Jackie and Regina. Really great talk. And Again, I can't emphasize just how much work they put into creating this process and doing all the research and best best practices and everything. And 
um, yeah, this, you know, just creating this foundation for the, the group projects that I hope we can kick off in the new year. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, I will give folks another minute here. Uh, anyone else uh, think of anything else? And, and also thank you everyone for uh, attending. Um, yeah, I know like, let's see, today is Veterans Day and the US and I guess there's also the Diwali uh, Festival of Lights. Um, and some folks are celebrating that. So, and it's a Saturday for a lot of people and yeah, just appreciate uh, all of you for coming out here and, and learning with us.